do you say that the overarching truth of Revelation is that the Christian's victory in Christ is absolute certainty? Absolutely. So unpack absolute certainty in a world that doesn't believe in absolutes too much these days. Well, you know what? If they don't believe in the Bible, they're, they're really not going to understand anything that you and I are talking about. But right. here's here's the deal. The book of Revelation begins, um, um, and it's sort of chaotic in the middle of it, and then at the end, you see the Lord Jesus Christ coming back from heaven, and the Bible discusses it and describes it. It's my favorite, my favorite chapter in the whole book. He, he rides out on a white horse and he's got all his holy ones with him and the angels and and he takes control of this earth. All of the armies of the earth by that time have discovered he's their common enemy. So they all come after him as if they're gonna they're gonna take God out, you know? Right. And the Bible says, with the breath of his mouth, he defeats them. Mm. I, I remember early on when I began to study that section of scripture, people asked me, why are the Christians all dressed in white? That doesn't sound like warfare or garments. And it finally dawned on me, they don't do anything except watch. They don't fight at all. Jesus does it all. Wow. And the Bible says that he puts them down, he, he destroys the rebellious, and then sets up his kingdom on this earth. And I guess, really, if you extrapolate the whole timeline from Revelation 1 to the end, what I like to say to people is, and this is the question I get asked more than any other, Dr. Jeremiah, where is all this going? Talking about what's happening in the Middle East and all that. Right. And I love to just say to them, I know where it's going. Yeah. I know how it ends. I know we win. I know that it's beyond any question. And because of that, I can live every day with confidence, even though I know that I'm seeing some of the the early uh, birth pangs of the revelation right. of tribulation time. I don't have to be concerned about that because God is in control. What is profitable about the book of Revelation as I am walking with Christ every day? Well, it, it's you know whether it's Revelation or any other part of the prophetic word of God, it is practical. And I remember one time realizing that in almost every major prophetic scripture, there is some call to action for us today. You know, that does away with the idea that the prophecies are not relevant. Uh, let me just give a couple of illustrations sure. for that. Here's, here's a very familiar one. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I have told you I'm going and I'll come back. But people don't remember how that begins. Let not your heart be troubled. If you know what God is up to, you don't have to be troubled. Here's another one. And so much the more as you see the day approaching, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. In other words, because Jesus is coming back, you should go to church. <laughs> you should get with God's people. I wrote a whole book about that called How to Live in, with Confidence in a Chaotic World. And I don't know if I've ever said it at the beginning. Every chapter was based on a call to action that came out of a prophetic passage. Yeah. So it's practical because when you read it, you come away with, because these things are so, what manner of men ought we to be? If you read prophecy and you try to understand what it says and what it means, you will discover it will have a profound effect on your life. And all that's encapsulated, I guess, in that phrase, uh, occupy until I Absolutely. come. Absolutely. It's a great, busy. yeah. Don't, don't escape. Right. Don't run don't away. Don't go sit on a fence in a white coat waiting for yeah. it to happen. Yeah. Get after it. Go, right. go tell people about Christ. Right. Let's drive down into some core theological and worldview positions, and then we'll, we'll, we'll keep digging into this wonderful book. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is coming back to earth again? I do. Why is that the case? The second coming of Jesus Christ is prophesied 1,848 times in the Old and New Testament. Say that number again, please. 1,848 times. For every one time that Jesus, or every one time the Bible speaks of the first coming of Christ, eight times it speaks of the second coming of Christ. There is more in the Bible about the second coming of Christ than anything else except the doctrine of salvation. More about the second coming than the first coming? Absolutely. Eight times more. Mm. And in the New Testament, every, every book has it, just about. One out of every 30 verses in the New Testament is about the second coming of Christ. So, David, um, 
in your book and in and, and the, the theology as we look at the Word of God, you tie the second coming of Jesus to the word victory. Yes. Why is it victorious that Jesus returns physically to this earth? Well, the first time he came to provide it for us, our salvation, and the next time he comes, our salvation will be completed. You know, the Bible has three tenses of salvation. It's always been interesting to me. We, are, we have been saved from our sin. That's right. We are being saved from the power of sin. Yeah. And one day we're going to be saved from the very presence of sin. So when Jesus comes back the second time, it's like the exclamation point at the end of the sentence. And we will be with him forever. We will never have to deal with sin again. We won't have the, you know, we, we live in... I, I can't get over all the stuff that's going on. I, I told somebody the other day, I didn't think I'd ever hear the word beheaded so much in my yeah. whole life as I've been hearing it. It's, it's a tribulation word. It yeah. really is. Yeah. The saints under the altar are there because they've been beheaded for their faith. Could you speak about for people who are hearing about the first coming of Jesus and what Jesus did for mm -hmm. us, born of a virgin, lived mm -hmm. a sinless life, mm -hmm. died on the cross, mm -hmm. rose three days later, ascended went back to heaven, right. and he made a promise. Yeah. And he, some people miss that, right. that, this promise. What is well, that? He, he, said, uh, he said, if I go, I'll come again. And, and the angels actually said to the disciples, why are you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken from you shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go. Speaking of the second advent, mm. just like every, all the disciples saw him go up, and when, the, when he comes back at the end of the tribulation period at the Battle of Armageddon, Revelation 1, 7, yeah. behold, he comes, and every eye shall see him. Everybody's going to see him when he comes back the second time. How does that tie in and where we need to be in our relationship with Jesus Christ? Well, you know what? The Bible says we should always be ready. You know, um, we should always realize that from those who believe in the rapture, as I do, that there's nothing left that has to happen before Jesus comes back. So there's no other event on a prophetic timeline that the rapture is next. <clears throat> no, and here's here's a way that I like to look at that. There's a saying that, that future events cast their shadows before them. So if I had a chart, I would do it this way, but let me just use my hands. Here's the second advent at the end of the tribulation, and there are many signs for the second advent. And the rapture takes place here. So if we're seeing some of the signs for the second advent beginning to happen now, yes. and, and the rapture is seven years earlier than that, while there aren't any specific signs for the rapture, the signs for the second advent are reminding us that he is coming. And you know what? Here's what I'd like to say. We started uh, this little segment about victory, and I want to end it that way. The Bible doesn't say when you see these things, put your head down, be sad, the Bible says, lift up your head, for your redemption draws nigh.